Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. Almost didn't give you the theme song. See, I have to do that because I don't know how many more of these there's going to be, and there'll be more on that next year. If you're uh, watching this, I'm assuming you didn't find it uh, when it was recorded, which is 824 uh, New Year's Eve. But it, that's probably because you have family and a life. Um, guys, the Massive Fukushima update has some very interesting um, nuances in it that you're going to want to pay attention to this month. As always, welcome aboard. Again, Correct Views, your humble host, uh, Samuel DeGangi. Vice News, a really big earthquake is expected to hit Japan. We just don't know when. Now, isn't it interesting that many of the experts who were not listened to initially when all of this began, people were saying, you know, this this isn't good. That, that there's something wrong here. They weren't listening to the data. And people were saying, hey, you know, th th there's, a, there's an earthquake that's going to come up here. And it's going to produce a tidal wave way over your safety wall. That can't happen. That's not good. Nobody could have ever foreseen that there would be a nine earthquake near Japan. Of course we could. Many scientists did. And now it's being done again. Um, it's going to happen in the next 30 years. And in the worst case scenario, it could kill 230,000 people. That's nothing. That's nothing. In 30 years, we're not going to have the Fukushima plant taken down yet. And if an earthquake of that magnitude was to knock over that Jenga tower, then you're looking at uh, quite possibly an extinction event. Uh, if nothing else, a uh, very good likelihood depending on how it was done and how much progress we've made by then, you won't even be able to live in the Northern Hemisphere. It, could, it could very, very easily could be that bad. It said, first a tiny tremor, then it's small enough for you to keep standing, but large enough to rattle your nearby shelves, forcing your eyes to dart around for imminent danger. Your heart skips a beat. Of course, it's describing an earthquake, but uh, that, that's not what's important. Listen to this. Since December 4th, several small islands like Akijima in Karagusha Prefecture have been experiencing an uncomfortable number of earthquakes, as we said would happen, as was predicted before Fukushima, and as this show has been talking about in depth for years. Exactly like we said here, no, no ambiguity, absolutely what we said here. Over the course of five days, these islands recorded 231 tremors. And although experts say the frequency was not extraordinary, nearly half of the tiny island's 75 residents have been evacuated. Um, again, the, the main takeaway from this, and you can read it, vice tends to be left-leaning, which means blah, 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 and they'll say that global warming is all of... Look, there, you now have the left who's been clamoring for people to embrace nuclear, even though it's the worst possible thing that you can do for the planet. They've been begging people to do it. And now that it looks like it was a very bad idea, you've got these left organizations maybe trying to pull away from this a little bit. But I think it's a little late for that now. You know what I mean? I think the a lot of people already know the damage that was done. And hopefully the people on the left who have been promoting this toxic poisonous mindset will have to pay. Uh, by that I mean perhaps legally, of course, politically, and that the careers need to be ruined, over, done, finished, kaputs. Um, Germany pulls, uh, pulls the plug, I should say, on three of its last six nuclear reactors, citing Fukushima. Uh, if Castell was here, we would have cheering as sound effects going off. It's from the National Post. This is remarkable news. We don't get a lot of good news on the massive Fukushima update. Let's face it, this is remarkable news. This is a proof that if those of us who know the truth continue to push it, then we can have some kind of an effect. Um, especially if you have not been cheated out of your entire listening audience, you know, due to uh, shadow banning and things of that nature. So the government decided to speed up its phasing out of nuclear power following Japan's Fukushima reactor meltdown in 2011. 
When an earthquake and tsunami destroyed the coastal plain in the world's worst nuclear disaster since Chernobyl, it's actually far worse than Chernobyl, and we've explained why many, many times. It's going to focus on other renewables, so it's still doing the green and still pretending the global warming is real. But thankfully, they've pulled away. and They can pretend with their fantasy land that global warming is real. That's fine. But when you start bringing nuclear into the mix, now your fantasy is affecting other people. So it's good to see that at least while they are still in their little fantasy world believing that man is warming the planet, at least they do have enough common sense to not build a nuclear power uh, poison in the middle of the proverbial play sandbox. The government decided to speed up its phasing out of nuclear power uh, following the Fukushima disaster, of course. The uh, reactors of Burgdorf Grundy, and I'm great at German, and Grunder Remagen C, run by utilities E.ON and WRE, will be shut down on Friday after three and a half decades in operation. Thanks, sweet God. The last three nuclear power plants, ISA 2, Emsland, and Nicker Verstein II, which I'm sure I pronounced perfectly as it's meant to be pronounced will be turned off at the end of 2022. Thank God, thank God, Jesus, thank you, and I'm not being facetious. The phase-out of an energy deemed clean and cheap by some of an irreversible step in Europe's biggest economy, facing ambitious climate targets. Look, man-made climate change is a lie, but nuclear poison? Nuclear poison is real. So, if nothing else... It's, it says that dismantling is expected to be completed by 2040. Thank dear God. Again, if you're going to pretend this whole global warming thing is true and you need to feel like you have some purpose and that you belong to something and that you're helping, that's fine. But we all know that you're full of it. So don't put the rest of us at risk by pushing these ridiculous nuclear power plants on everyone. Guys, two more stories left. Um, now this I've been talking about for a minute. As you know, uh, all things radiation here on the massive Fukushima update. Cell phone radiation expert says FCC in denial over health risks demands full independent investigation. Now you've got this kind of thing popping up on Fox. We have been talking about it. I've been talking about it for way longer than this show has been around for, which is, you know, over 10 years now. I see... Women put their cell phone in their bra. Save the tatas, bro. What is wrong with you? That is a direct path to breast cancer. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Sign up for radiation treatment. It's not good to do that. The data has been there for anyone willing to see it. But much like people embracing... TEPCO, in, which is General Electric, people embrace the nuclear poison in order to get their deep pockets. Um, people will sell their souls to the devil for the deep pockets of George Soros. You've got the same thing here. The cell phone companies and the, the manufacturers of the towers and all of this, there's so much money to be made that you don't even need a conspiracy to see how this has taken place. It's kind of obvious. There's so much money to be made that they wanted to get all these up. And now that all these towers are up and everyone's got their phones, people are starting to see an increase in cancers, as everyone predicted would be the case. And now you're finding it on mainstream media, kind of like you saw earlier with uh, the Germany starting to wake up to the whole lie of nukes. Um, it's having an effect, and I think that's good. Epidemiologist and environmental hazard expert Dr. Dever, Dever, excuse me, Davis called for an independent evaluation, thank God, of the dangers associated with cell phone radiation, citing a potential link to cancer, a cause for heightened concern. This was said to Tucker Carlson. Why don't they use some of the data that was put on this show over the last decade? The issue of cell phone radiation is we've been in denial, and the denial is in large part psychological, Davis told Tucker Carlson in an episode, episode released on Monday. We simply can't think about the possibility. Is it a chance that these things are harmful? A chance? 
you know how many times I've lost, almost lost my cell phone because I try to avoid putting it in my pants pocket? It's because I care about my balls. It's, it's not even that I'm afraid to die. And life sometimes, you know, like, mm, can be a blessing. I don't want to suffer. You know what I mean? I don't want to get sick or some crap like that. And it, when you store a radiological device near your genitals, near your breasts, you should not be surprised that cancer develops there. It sort of happens the same way night follows day. It's simple, easy to understand science. Easy. Davis, who is a PhD in science, studies the postdoctoral masters of public health and epidemiology, was appointed by former President Bill Clinton as a senior advisor in the Department of Health and Human Services, where she served as a member of the Chemical Safety and Hazard Mitigation Board. Why well, hasn't she spoken up sooner? Oh, probably because she was brought up by Bill Clinton. You don't know that, see? Well, I can hear my comment line. Uh, Davis has been at the forefront of scientific studies examining the link between cancer and heavy cell phone use with the nonprofit, the Environmental Health Trust. Yes, I was kidding which conducts research on environmental health hazards and seeks to educate professionals and policymakers about the dangers. There have been varying degrees of studies about the potential health impacts of cell phone radiation from the earliest models to the latest 5G handsets, and we've gone over that extensively at this show. If you look carefully at the membership of those bodies and the resolving door between the industry and those who regulate it, again, uh, talking about many of the things that we've talked about with the FCC and it says here other health professionals have come to notice the inconveniences. She's talking about the interlocutor here, as I was just saying, that's big business and cell towers and money over health. If you look carefully at the membership of those bodies and the resolving door between the industry and those who regulate it, you can see that there really hasn't been a full independent evaluation, which is why we at the Environmental Health Trust are calling for an independent evaluation of the science, and the FCC has utterly failed to look. Does that sound familiar? Does that sound like something that you may have heard on this very show? I'm pretty sure that it does. And that brings us to, you know what that brings us to, the dumb of the day. And I'm going to give you your song. Enjoy. At least one more time, man. You are an idiot. All right, so what won the dumb of the day was closing us out here. Despite widespread opposition... Japan plans to, dump, plans to dump the water from Fukushima's plant into the Pacific Ocean, globalvoices.org. Now, this has been going back and forth. We've covered the, the mountains of authentic science, not the fake science. It's pushed by the industry. We don't need that. We need real authentic science, the kind of data that you can trust, the kind of information that you get here. That data, which is to say real data, you can use the terms interchangeably, the real data, the data that you get here, has shown how this is poison. And they've been going back and forth on the uh, legality of poisoning people. And uh, this is the latest development in it. Uh, people in coastal communities in Japan, joined by voices from around the world, denounced a new governmental plan to dump contaminated water from the site of the Fukushima nuclear disaster into the Pacific Ocean. Local communities and other nations in the Pacific fear that dumping will poison the environment and cripple local fishing. Yeah, we've already showed that. We've already showed that ad nauseum, how that would be the case. Um, the Japanese government's plan to pump the contaminated water has been in the works since 2020. Greenpeace, who should focus on this a little more than the lie of man-made global warming, uh, Greenpeace has said in April 2021 that it collected 183,000 signatures opposing the plan to discharge. Well, you have no voice, you know that. Also in 2021, South Korean civil society groups issued a statement condemning TEPCO's plan, noting even if it diluted the total amount of radioactive material thrown into the ocean, that remains unchanged. If the radioactive wastewater is discharged, it will be an irrevertible disaster. 
not only for the marine ecosystem, but for the humans. Do you think they care about the humans? The Pacific Collection on Nuclear Issues, which represents civil society organizations based in Oceania, refutes the veracities of this study. The Pacific is not and must not become a dumping ground for nuclear wastes. The Collective considers that TEPCO and the relevant Japanese government agencies have wrongly prioritized convenience, yes, and costs, yes, over the short and long-term health. In other words, it's going to make you sick soon by giving you things like the flu, making you more susceptible for COVID, things like that. And it's going to make you sick in the long run via things like heart disease and cancer. It's that simple, people. It's that simple. Um, we don't praise Z on this show from China, but he had a good point. Xi Jinping said, if, uh, if, if it's so safe, why isn't Japan releasing the water into their own lakes and streams? Why are they releasing it into the oceans that we all share? That's a good point. Thank you for listening, friends. Good night, God bless, and uh, thanks for hitting share.